Hi, I'm Mark Cerny. I'm excited to be here to talk about the newest addition to our console lineup, PlayStation 5 Pro, and how it advances gaming technology. But first, I want to take just a minute to look at what we put in the original PlayStation 5 and how it delivers an exceptional gaming experience. When PS5 debuted in 2020, it brought a lot to the table. Eight Zen 2 CPU cores form the brains of PlayStation 5 and enable high-speed complex gameplay, with character counts reaching into the hundreds and frame rates that can be as high as 120 frames a second. PS5 has a powerful RDNA 2 GPU, which can render anything from intricate details to fantastic worlds with vast panoramas to explore. Ray tracing allows for dramatic visual improvements, including reflections off of water or glass, and the realism that comes from real-time global illumination. A custom SSD can load data at breathtaking speed, resulting in ultra-fast transitions between game worlds and data streaming rates so high that traversal speeds are essentially unlimited. You okay? I'm working on it! Tempest 3D Audio Tech brings an unparalleled sense of immersion to the sound of the games. With audio so real, you may not even need to see the enemies to know exactly where they are. Finally, the DualSense controller has haptics that let you feel through your hands what your character is experiencing inside of the game. It's wonderful to see such variety and richness of game experiences. Creators have made amazing use of the hardware capabilities, but when I talk to them, I do hear about their desire for more graphics performance. The dreams of the developers are bigger than can be supported at 60 frames per second, and that leads to an aspect of modern gaming that we're all familiar with, graphics modes. It can be a difficult choice for players. Fidelity modes emphasize the visuals, typically through higher resolution rendering. These modes might also have enhanced detail or use more ray tracing. But the games only run at 30 frames per second. The visuals can be choppier and the controls less responsive. Performance modes emphasize frame rate and interactivity, typically choosing to run at 60 frames per second, mainly by reducing the graphical detail until those frame rates can be achieved. When asked to decide on a mode, players are choosing performance about three quarters of the time. Removing that decision, or at least narrowing that divide, is one of the key targets for PlayStation 5 Pro. We want to give players the graphics that the game creators aspire to, at the high frame rates that players typically prefer. To do that, PS5 Pro substantially improves over PlayStation 5 in three ways. Here's what we call the Big Three. First, we made the GPU much larger and increased the speed of the memory it uses. The result is rendering that's up to 45% faster. Second, we made major upgrades to the ray tracing, taking a streamlined and accelerated approach that allows calculation of the rays at double or even triple the speeds of PlayStation 5. And finally, we added custom hardware for machine learning and an AI library called PlayStation Spectral Super Resolution, or PSSR for short. PSSR analyzes the game images pixel by pixel and can add an extraordinary amount of detail, which boosts the effective resolution of the games. Game creators are adding PS5 Pro support to new and existing titles. And with the big three involved, the results can be pretty amazing, with graphics showing something like fidelity levels of detail, but it doubled the frame rate. Here's The Last of Us Part Two running on PS5 Pro. It has huge amounts of detail and targets a super smooth 60 frames per second. Let's compare this to the fidelity mode on PS5, which is only running at 30 frames per second and is therefore much choppier. This goal of delivering almost fidelity-like graphics at performance frame rates has been achieved for a broad set of titles, including Marvel's Spider-Man 2 and Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. We can see that PS5 Pro is close to doubling the power of PlayStation 5. Another way to compare the two consoles is to look at PS5 Pro versus performance mode on PS5, both of which target 60 frames per second. 
what we see here is a difference in detail. PS5 Pro is much sharper and crisper than PS5. For this, my favorite is the parade scene from Ratchet and Clank. Distant details are much clearer. And here, we can see Marvel's Spider-Man 2 is noticeably higher resolution throughout the scene, including the trees and procedural cars. So overall, some remarkable improvement to the games. On PS5 Pro, we can see increased sharpness to the graphics or smoother and more responsive gameplay. This is the big three showing their value. As you've been seeing, machine learning via the PSSR library is being used quite broadly to add pixel detail and boost frame rate. But there are as many approaches as there are game engines. The increase in raw GPU power is being especially effective for Horizon Forbidden West. Apart from the detail boost, that extra graphics power is allowing for improvements to lighting and visual effects, as well as to the hair and the skin in cinematics. Open up, guys. Dwarf's orders. Good enough for me. Ray tracing is finding broad usage as well, particularly when the games are focused on higher frame rates. The faster hardware in PS5 Pro can make a real difference allowing Gran Turismo 7 to add ray-traced reflections between the cars in gameplay, while continuing to support their targeted 60 frames per second. That boost in ray tracing is also delivering big wins for Hogwarts Legacy, allowing not only for better reflections and a greater variety of reflective surfaces, but also for further realism in the casting of shadows. I hope you've enjoyed this run-through of the technology behind PlayStation 5 Pro. Simply put, it's the most powerful console we've ever built, and a worthy addition to the PS5 family. Let me wrap this up by giving you a quick look at a number of games running on the new console. You'll never win.